Welcome back to episode four of How to Be Unscammable. If you are new to this series, this show is designed to help older adults learn how to secure their digital lives. We've got 10 episodes that are going to walk you through every area of your digital life that you need to think about securing. And that's going to protect your personal data, your online accounts, and your devices. Welcome everyone again. I'm Linda Faucus, the founder of Glue Society. We are a Canadian nonprofit organization that's here to do one thing, to help older adults figure out how to use the technology that's in their lives. And digital security is a hot topic for the Glue community. Now we've already covered a lot in our short time together in the last three episodes. Episode three was a doozy, especially if you found out that your data is being sold on the dark web. We've looked at your home network and the devices that are connecting to it. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at passwords. Passwords are often the only thing that stand between us and the data cyber criminals are trying to steal. It's all about your password right now. So it's important to use strong passwords for every online account. I say this a lot. It's probably in every episode that our passwords have to be long, strong, and unique. And yep, that means you need a totally different password for every online account. I can hear the groaning already. I know. Now that you've checked to see if your email address has been seen by cyber criminals, that was episode three, the next step is to change your online account passwords. But before you dive into that, go through this whole episode. It's important that you know how to create unscammable passwords. I don't want you to go through the effort of securing your online accounts, but doing it the wrong way. So let's get started figuring out how to manage all of those passwords. Okay, passwords are a hassle and I'm pretty sure we can all agree on that. According to a NordPass, that's a password manager app, 2021 survey, more than 68% of us admit to using the same password on different accounts. Are you one of those people? We're doing this to make it easier to get into our online accounts. I totally understand that. And this is a very bad habit, though. It puts your digital life at risk. There's no question about that. We can't share passwords across accounts. To feel more secure though, some people change a few characters or add a number to that password to mix it up a little bit. It's a good try, but it's not gonna keep your account safe. Hackers are way smarter than that. And then some people don't worry about their passwords because they don't have, they think they don't have anything online that's worth stealing. Who cares if someone can see my email, some people will say, I don't even use it. Or I'm not bothered if someone knows I have a digital library card. I hear these kind of comments all the time and cyber criminals love these people. To be unscammable, you have to treat all of your online account information the same. It's all vulnerable to attack and every account is valuable to cyber criminals, whether we think so or not. The reality is your community center account, for instance, needs to be as well protected as your online bank account. And here's why. Cyber criminals steal information and then use it to break into more high value accounts. So if your online accounts share a username or password, a data breach at your community center, for instance, could mean your financial accounts are threatened, especially if you're sharing a similar or the same password between those two online accounts. And that's exactly why it's so critical not to share passwords across accounts. This is also a reminder to limit what information we add to our online accounts. We talk more about that in episode 10. But do all of those online accounts you're creating need to have all of that personally identifiable information? It's something we'll talk about later, but it's definitely something for you to start thinking about now. Cyber criminals want us to use weak and reused passwords. They just love that. And it turns out 52% of us who reuse passwords are saying they do it to feel in control of all of their passwords. 
It seems using simple passwords and reusing passwords across accounts makes life feel easier to them. But that is like leaving your front door wide open and then putting a big open sign out front of your place and then posting to social media that you're not home. You're just inviting criminals to walk right in and steal stuff. One of the ways that cyber criminals break into online accounts is by guessing passwords. So simple passwords and commonly used passwords make that a breeze and they love it. Another way cyber criminals get into your online accounts is to buy usernames and passwords off the dark web. We talked about that in episode three and that is a much watch episode for sure. They also regularly scroll through social media accounts looking for our birth dates, mentions or photos from our vacation spots, our pet names, and other personal information. And they use this information, the same information we tend to use when creating our easy to remember passwords. They use that information to try to guess what passwords we are using or try to guess the answers to our security questions. Yikes. Now, cyber criminals are working fast when they're doing this. They can hack 921 passwords every second. Weak passwords don't keep them out. They make it easy for them to get in. And I love what Brett Arsenault, the Chief Information Security Officer at Microsoft, says about this. Hackers don't break in. They log in. If there's one thing you take away from this series, please make it the importance of following a system for creating, managing, and using long, strong, and unique passwords. The stronger your passwords are, the safer you are. Whether your personal data has been seen on the dark web, or not, it's time to create an inventory of your online accounts and know what accounts are being seen on the dark web. It's important you have that information written down. To help you keep track of all this, I've included the online account tracker from episode three in these show notes as well. This tracker will help you organize what information you need to collect. It's gonna help you avoid checking the same account twice if you have to check passwords or change passwords and it will ensure that you don't miss something. And you can also refer to this tracker when it's time for your annual account cleanup. Yep, that's when we change our passwords annually or more often if you're feeling in the mood. So download the online account tracker using the link or QR code at the end of this episode. This is similar to the SmartThings inventory tracker included in episode two. So things you want to track in this step is you want to track your online account names, the website address, and note if you've changed the password. It's nice to note the date you changed the passwords if you can manage that. And also note if that account has been seen on the dark web. Write down the email address or the username you're using for that account. There's a few more things you can track as well, but you'll see that when you download the document. Be sure to store this list when you fill it in, store it somewhere secure and keep it away from prying eyes. So what does a strong password really look like? It's true the longer your passwords are, the stronger they are, but that's only if they don't contain any words. Hacking tools easily purchased on the dark web can quickly compare your passwords to every single word from every single dictionary. It's called a dictionary hack, and it can include brand names, proper names, place names, etc. So if you're using real words in your passwords, we want to stop that. That means your passwords are not secure. And that's why security experts remind us that our passwords should contain basically gibberish. That means a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols or special characters without a real word in sight. Here is what a secure password looks like. I really like Troy Hunt's quote. He's the creator of that incredibly useful Have I Been Pwned website that I shared in episode three. The only secure password is the one you can't remember. That's a good tip when you're creating your passwords. A recent study showed that 79% of us are generating our own passwords. 
In our Glue Digital Security classes, I get to talk to people about their tips and tricks for creating passwords. And these range through all sorts of ideas. Something like arranging words randomly in a sentence is one way that some people do it. Others use their pet's name with their birth year in their passwords. That is a common trick, but the information that we are using in that password is probably pretty easily found on Facebook, for instance. Other tricks include taking the second, let's say the second and fourth letters of the name of the website they are on, and then adding a special character and putting in a favorite number. That's a really popular trick. It's a YouTube video that seems to get a lot of views. But the trouble with these systems is that we are human. And that means we tend to fall back on using the same words and familiar phrases in the passwords we are creating. And these passwords are getting written down and then reused for years and years and probably shared across a few accounts. Now add to that the fact that according to a 2021 survey, the average person has about 90 online accounts. Even if that's not you, the point is we have a lot of online accounts and experts are guessing that that number could be as high as 300 by the end of this decade. So even if you don't have this many accounts, you can safely bet you're going to have more online accounts in the future. Because every new device you get, every app you download, website or service you sign up for is probably going to require you to create an online account. And that means you need a secure password management system that easily grows with your digital life. When we don't have an easy system to follow, we are statistically showing that we fall back on familiar passwords and phrases and we start sharing passwords across accounts. And that is exactly how we fall victim to cybercrime. This show is about making you unscammable and that means adding layers of digital security to your life. Using truly random passwords is an important layer as long as you're using different passwords on each account. But remember that sharing even a randomly generated password across accounts threatens your online security. Okay, so this step is to use any of these random password generators that I'm sharing with you to create a list of passwords that you can use to secure your online accounts. Randomly generated passwords on all of your accounts makes them unscammable. Studies show that 73% of us are not using truly random passwords. So just by using a truly randomly generated password to protect your accounts puts you way ahead of most people. So why randomly generated passwords and not those password systems we were talking about earlier? Well, it turns out that humans are really bad at coming up with random passwords. People often use words and numbers that mean something to them. Like I said before, a pet's name, maybe their mother's maiden name, song lyrics, etc. And that makes those passwords easier to guess. They're not randomly generated, they're pretty guessable. And when cyber criminals try to guess your passwords, they are not doing it in their heads, they're using computers. An ordinary desktop computer can test over a hundred million passwords a second and faster computers can do billions of passwords a second. Password length and complexity are essential for us to stay unscammable. Randomly generated passwords are your secret weapon in that fight. There are loads of free and safe tools you can use to create randomly generated passwords. And if you're worried that using one of these tools is itself a way of stealing a password you might use, write down the randomly generated password and change a few characters or symbols to make it your own. Most of the password manager apps we'll talk about later in this episode offer free random password generators that you can use. I have a link to those in the show notes at the end of the episode. If you find that your data is on the dark web by following the steps in episode three, then your immediate next step is to change passwords on those accounts. To do this, you will log into each account, navigate to the settings, security, or password section of that website and change your password. 
Follow this process for every online account that has been breached. And if you're not sure how to change a password on that account, try searching the web for help. To figure out how to change my Amazon password, for instance, I would use this search phrase. You could also try reaching out to that customer support department for that website for assistance. Now, changing your passwords ensures that cyber criminals can't get into your online account using the credentials they bought on the dark web. And this is going to give you peace of mind knowing that your account is secure and that you still have control over this account. If the password you were using on any of your breached accounts are used on other online accounts, you need to change your passwords on those accounts too. That sounds a little complicated, but the bottom line is, if one of your passwords that's being seen on the dark web is used anywhere else, or a variation of it is used anywhere else, you have to go to those online accounts and change those passwords as well. Even if this is an account you no longer want to use, the first step is to secure it and then decide about deleting it. You can't just ignore online accounts. We will cover how to manage and delete your online accounts in episode 10. Make sure any accounts that have your personally identifiable information or PII, reminder, that's financial, medical, or banking information, etc. This is going to protect your PII and ensure these online accounts are secure. To do this, log into that account and then change your password and use one of the randomly generated passwords you created in the last step. And yes, you need to update all passwords that are weak, reused, or similar to other passwords, or ones that you haven't changed in the last year if you really want to be unscammable. And you're replacing those passwords with randomly generated passwords. Now pay special attention to your email accounts. It's critical that your email accounts are protected with updated, randomly generated passwords. Even if those accounts weren't part of a data breach, you don't want anyone to get access to your email accounts, especially since this is where all of your password reset emails go. We talk about email security and email management in episode five. And take note, if you change the password on your email accounts, you may have to update this information in any email app you are using. So it's good to know there might be a few extra steps involved. This may be one of the steps in this episode that you want to get a techie friend to help you with, or see if your email app provider can assist you in changing your password. Oh boy, I get tired just thinking of all the passwords I would have to remember or type in if I didn't use a password manager. That would be a nightmare. I like efficiency, mostly so I can spend my time doing things I love, and juggling passwords is definitely not something I love, so I don't do it. I use a password manager. It's as simple as that. Every digital security expert agrees that the best way to secure your online accounts is to use a password manager. I've given you a few clever ways to do it without a password manager in the previous steps, but a password manager is the way you want to go. This way, every online account can have a randomly generated password without you having to think too much about it, or even enter that password when it's needed. It is so easy to use one of these apps. And a password manager makes changing passwords a breeze. They make logging into our online accounts seamless and they protect our online accounts from attack. Most of the password managers I recommend here have a free plan. Some don't, but most do. So cost doesn't have to be a factor in your decision for using a password manager. So if you are already using a password manager, nicely done. Now, whether that's an app or a browser-based solution, set aside some time to look through your existing passwords and see if any of them need updating. Now, be on the lookout for passwords that are weak or are used on multiple accounts. Your password manager should give you a heads up on that. 
The goal is for you to have a unique randomly generated password on each account, and that's going to be one that your password manager will generate for you. That's how you stay unscammable. So when was the last time you changed a password on an account, especially on your email accounts? It's important to change your passwords at least once a year. More often is better, but at least once a year. I like to use daylight savings time as a prompt to change my passwords, at least on my accounts that I haven't looked at in a long time or that I know have personally identifiable information. I change my passwords on those, even though I am using a password manager app. And also I check back to see if my data is being sold on the dark web. My password manager app will tell me that, but I do poke over to have I been pwned once in a while just to double check. Two-factor authentication, or 2FA, also called two-step verification, is an important additional security step that ensures only you can access your online accounts. It may sound a little complicated, but it's actually kind of simple. 2FA is available on almost every major online account. It's a feature that an online account has that allows you to secure that online account. Some shopping or subscription websites will even give you a discount if you set it up on your online account. Now, since November of 2021, Google has been rolling out the requirement for two-step verification on all Google user accounts. So if you do have a Gmail account or you're are, are a Google user, you're going to see a notice sometime soon, if you haven't already, that you have to shift over to two-step verification. Apple has been sneaking this into our lives for years, and Amazon and Facebook and others are not far behind. This may be a requirement on major accounts soon. So we're all going to have to get used to the concept of using 2FA or two-step verification pretty quickly. Even if you're using a password manager app, you still may need to use this second step of verification on your online account. People think that because they're using a username, usually an email address, and a password to get into an online account, that they're already using two-factor authentication, but that's not quite right. In that example, when you use a username and password to get into an account, you're only using one factor authentication because your username is not a factor of authentication, only your password is. Your username tells the website who you are and your password authenticates you. That's the one factor of authentication. When you use two-factor authentication, you're adding a second factor to verify that it's you. And this is usually a temporary code sent to you that you enter to gain access to the account. This one-time code can be sent by text, a message, a phone call, an email, or even through a verification app. Don't worry too much about the process. Just understand the concept. You're entering your username to tell the website or the account who you are. You then enter your password to verify step one. And then you enter this temporary code to double verify the second step of verification that it's actually you getting into your account. So that is the way two-step verification works. The temporary code that is sent to you usually expires after a short period of time, so there's no need to write that down. And 2FA, setting that up on your accounts, getting two-factor authentication set up on the accounts that allow you to have it, is a really important step to becoming unscammable, even if you are using a password manager. Experts are strongly recommending that we set up 2FA on all social media accounts and any apps and websites that contain personally identifiable information. So you can take a look at your account list to see which accounts those are. You're going to have to set this up and get used to this type of login in the future anyway, so you might as well start now or when you're ready. You'll definitely set up two-factor authentication on any accounts that have been seen on the dark web, so make that a priority.
create an inventory of your online accounts. I've included a link to the online account tracker in the show notes. Step number two, create a list of strong passwords to use. These should be randomly generated passwords. And in the show notes, you'll find links to websites that can help you generate them. Step three, change account passwords on breached accounts and update your passwords on your email accounts. If you don't know if your data has been part of a breach, watch episode three to learn how to find out. It's important information for you to have. Step four, change account passwords on all other accounts, starting with any accounts that have your PII. Step five, use a password manager app. Just make your life easier and more secure by using a password manager. I've included a list of the password managers we recommend in the show notes. Step six, update passwords stored in your password manager. Take a moment to update them with randomly generated passwords, preferably using a password manager. That'll make the process so much simpler. Step seven, set up two-factor authentication on all accounts that have this feature. It may sound complicated, but it's pretty simple with a little bit of practice. The good news is that we are heading towards a password-less society, finally. Now, if you're a Microsoft user, you can ditch your password right now to get into your account. You can use the Microsoft Authenticator app, a security key or a verification code. Microsoft sends to your phone or your email account, and this lets you get into your Microsoft account without a password at all. It's unbelievable, and that's kind of the future we're looking at. So contact Microsoft for instructions on how to make this happen for your Microsoft account, if you're interested. I've included links to the Microsoft Complete Guide to Setting Up Your Passwordless Account in the show notes if you want to read more. This is a hint of what's coming to all of our online accounts one day soon, but we are definitely not there yet. So stick with that password manager for now and consider setting up two-factor authentication wherever you can. I see a lot of people come into a glue class with their password list taped to the inside of their tablet case, for instance, or they'll have a book on it that says my passwords right on the front. And inside that book are, wait for it, all of their passwords. Please don't do that. And definitely, if you're going to have a paper password book or sheets or information written down somewhere, don't bring it outside with you outside of your house and definitely don't include it or put it close to your device. It's a list that should never be out in public with you, Um, not even in your bag or your pocket. It contains all the keys to your digital kingdom. If you need passwords when you're out and about and you're using public Wi-Fi, you need to check out episode nine because it might just be time to beef up your digital security when using public Wi-Fi. So when storing your password lists at home, make sure that those lists, those paper-based lists are well hidden and please try to keep them somewhere away from your devices. If somebody is searching for that list, they're going to look in the drawers or around your desk or around where that computer or your devices are stored. So don't keep that information there. And I know that that means you might have to get up and get the list when you need it or you might have to go store it away somewhere safely, but do consider that if you have people coming in and out of your home. It's important to know that people don't need to steal this list to get access to your passwords. They can just simply take a picture of it and you'd never know that they were there. Even though we know we shouldn't do it, there are times when we might want to share a login password with some of the people in our lives. Now, password managers can make this process safe and secure. But if you don't have a password manager, make sure you are never doing this by email or text message. You don't want to share passwords in that way. There is no way of knowing if that communication channel you're using is secure. Your email address might be secure, but is the other person's? We don't know. The safest way, therefore, to share a password with someone is going to be uh, to phone them. Just pick up the phone and tell them what the password is. And remember that passwords are case sensitive. So you're going to want to make sure they understand where the capital letters are and the small letters are. And passwords don't have any spaces. So that's another thing to remember when you're reciting 
or writing down a password. This is also a tip for any e-transfer passwords you're creating. Really important you don't share those passwords in an email. Phone call is best. And that's it for the steps in this episode. That is a huge amount of information and this is the longest episode in the series, but it's critical information for you to have to be unscammable. I encourage you to download the show notes and rewatch any part of this episode you're not clear on and watch it until it sticks. Password management is so important to get right and a password manager, even a free one, makes this all so much simpler. And then you can rest easy knowing, like really knowing that your online accounts are unscammable. So check out the additional learning resources using this link or this QR code. I've included the online account tracker to help you keep track of all this information and keep it all organized. You'll also find a transcript of this episode and links to the password managers I recommend and the other links on this topic. All of the additional learning materials for this episode can be downloaded to your computer or a mobile device and printed off if you like. Thanks for watching episode four. In episode five, we dive into how to secure your email addresses and your email accounts. This is an important step, especially if you found out your data is on the dark web. And in episode six, we take a look at social hacking. That's the human side of cybercrime with some tips that you can use to fight back. See you next time. Mm -hmm.